administration wants to put more pressure on North Korea and won't negotiate without uh, preconditions. The South Korean leader is a strong supporter of direct talks and engagement with North Korea. Republican Senator Roger Wicker of Mississippi is a senior member of the Senate Armed Services Committee. Uh, Senator, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, glad to be with you. Thanks for the opportunity. So, so, Senator, what message do you think uh, President Trump needs to deliver when he meets with the South Korean president later today? They're going to be having dinner at the White House. I think uh, Kim Jong-un is one of the most evil and most dangerous men on the planet. And the president uh, needs to make sure this, that the South Korean president, our ally, understands uh, that uh, he shares this feeling. Uh, about the danger and the threat that we uh, that we face from uh, North Korea. You, you have called North Korea's nuclear program a clear and growing danger to regional allies, including our own troops, and there are nearly 30,000 U.S. troops along the demilitarized zone between North and South Korea. What are the options, realistic op options, for dealing with this threat? Uh, because if the U.S. were to launch some sort of military strike, the North Korean response would be devastating to so many millions of people who live within 20 or 30 miles of the DMZ. That's true, and, and I, I tell you, we, we have to hope that uh, as uh, unstable as Kim Jong-un uh, is, that he's not suicidal. And I, I do not believe he wants to commit suicide. So uh, he has to understand that any attack on the part of his regime against us or our allies would be met with a, with a devastating response. To that end, we are uh, building up our military again. We just finished the markup of the National Defense Authorization Act this week in the Senate. We marked to um, a $640 billion number, which is higher than uh, in the past, higher than the House was able to, but uh, they, they marked to uh, $621 billion. So uh, suffice it to say the House and the Senate are build, building up our military. The president's called for uh, over 350 ships in our naval fleet, up from 276 where we are now, which is completely inaccurate. A lot of that will go to the Pacific. And then we're going to have to make things hard on um, the Kim administration and the Kim regime financially. Uh, well, we let need me to ask cut you, off all I, I, tourism I, I, to that state well, and, uh, uh, and hurt there, them in, in their pocketbook. Well, you think the Chinese are doing enough to help in this crisis? I don't think they're doing enough, but I think they're they're doing more. And they have to realize, as a country that's trying to uh, engage in more trade and, and be more open and have more Americans and more Westerners coming in and out with all the benefits that it brings to us, but also to their people, they've got to realize that an unstable North Korea uh, along their border and in their neighborhood uh, is a huge wet blanket to their efforts. Six prominent experts on North Korea have now written an open letter to President Trump urging him to begin talks, direct talks, with the Kim Jong-un regime. Uh, let me put up a quote from that letter. Talking is not a reward or a concession to Pyongyang and should not be construed as signaling acceptance of a nuclear-armed North Korea. There is no guaranteed diplomacy will work, but there are no good military options, and a North Korean response to a U.S. attack could devastate South Korea and Japan. Now, what's your reaction to that recommendation, that letter? You, you know, Direct I think talks. The, the president and the South Korean president are going to be talking about this tonight. And clearly, the new South Korean president was elected on a platform of opening up talks and, uh, and, and maybe a softer approach to the Kim regime. Um, that has not worked very well in the past. Uh, I, I guess there's no harm in, in sending messages back and forth. But uh, until we can get some indication that talks would mean anything, I think more severe sanctions uh, less Western travel uh, and, and hurting the uh, regime in their pocketbooks, as well as making it clear that an attack on the United States would be a death warrant to the regime and to a, a lot of people in the North. I, th I think those are better approaches. Senator Wicker, before I let you go, I want to get your quick reaction to this uproar, this tweet by the president that's causing a lot of commotion today, especially among your Republican colleagues. As you know, he attacked uh, a female anchor, Mika Brzezinski, uh, described her as, quote, bleeding badly from a facelift uh, during an encounter uh, around New Year's Eve. 
Your Republican colleague, uh, Senator Ben Sass of Nebraska, tweeted this response, quote, please just stop. This isn't normal, and it's beneath the dignity of your office, close quote. Uh, is, is this tweet, I, I, mean, I assume you were shocked when you saw it as well, but is this what we should expect from the President of the United States? Well, I'll say two things. I, um, I, I wouldn't uh, respond in, uh, in that kind to the attacks of, uh, of uh, Morning Joe and Mika Brzezinski, but uh, and I wish the President wouldn't do things like that. That said, this really is um, a, a side issue as far as most people out in the, in, uh, in the great heartland of America are concerned. They want us to get health care done. They want us to cut taxes. They want us to get the economy going to build an infrastructure program and, and to make our country strong and uh, more respected again. And these sorts of things are, are distractions. I wouldn't have spent uh, the, the morning talking about this if it, uh, if it were up to me. But, but I think the American people are not going to be distracted from, from the, the important issues, the ones we're working on uh, across the street in the Capitol. But you agree, Senator, that the tweets like this make it more difficult to focus in on, on what you correctly point out are those critically important issues. I, I agree that I would rather do without the distractions. Senator Roger Wicker, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. After the break,